On this episode of Extraordinary Lives, I'm talking with Scott Weaver's Right OBE. Scott is best known for co-founding one of Britain's largest e-commerce businesses, kiddiecare.com. He also created the monetization platform Elevate and successfully sold both of these companies for north of $150 million. A prolific entrepreneur, he started his first tech business at 18 and is now regarded as one of the UK's most innovative technology professionals and digital investors. Four decades later, he's made over 100 investments and won multiple industry awards. Having been innovative and successful in business, Scott clearly has a mentality for giving back, particularly with spending time supporting and mentoring founders. I'm very much looking forward to talking with Scott. Scott, welcome. Thank you very much. Tell me, who is Scott Weaver's right? It's pretty complicated. <laughs> I'm pretty complicated, albeit I like to keep things simple. I'm probably uh, the 18-year-old boy who left home with 30 pounds, 30 quid in his pocket, with um, the reality of leaving a broken home. Um, my mum and dad were married seven times, that's seven with a seven between them. And, you know, I, 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 a lot of people will feel that's a, a problem, um, but actually for me it was a blessing. I needed to get out, I needed to face the world. I was 18, I started my business when I was 18, I was absolutely ready for it. Um, I felt my brother and sister were older, five and three years, and um, they took it harder, but I, I took it as an opportunity, which I later discovered how entrepreneurs work, they see yeah. problems as an opportunity, and I took it as an opportunity and went gung-ho into life. So actually starting the business at 18 was almost like sort of taking control. By I default, had, becoming an entrepreneur. I had to. Yeah. I had to because my, um, for his, his value he brought to me, my father was, I felt, an incredible person with loads of flaws. Okay. Um, and uh, he was in the RAF uh, for 22 years. Mm -hmm. I was a RAF baby born in Singapore. My brother was born in Aden. My sister was born in Red Roof in Cornwall. Mm. You know, we went around and followed my father. Um, but the reality is um, he needed a, a lady by his side and that took him to where it took him. Um, and that's absolutely fine. But now as a 52-year-old man, yeah. you know, I, I've been married for 30 years. So um, I understand the value of a good woman. He took four marriages to find, in his opinion, a good woman. And tragically, um, he's gone. He died at 73 of cancer. Uh, and my mum died at 63 of cancer, so I was 40 when I lost them both. Um, prior to the um, prior to the kitty care sale, so they never saw uh -huh. the the exit. So they never really saw what I was working for. They never really no. understood why I was working so hard and had sacrificed pretty much everything to get where I got, mm. where, where wherever that is. So yeah, it's a um, it defines people. It's a lot there. The business that you started at 18, forgive my ignorance, was that Kitty Care? No. 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 And when did Kitty Care come into your... Into it's a great your... question. And everybody thinks I started Kitty Care, but my in-laws started Kitty Care. Uh, my journey was from 16 to 18 at a local computer company. Okay. In so that got you into tech? I got me into tech on the, the famous YTS program. So £35 a week. Yeah. My rent was 50 I was already in debt. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, and um, I left home at 18 on my 18th birthday and um, started my business. Absolutely excited to leave home, excite, uh, excited to start my business, which was a computer company. There's my tech background. Gotcha. So I spent two years at YTS learning DOS, mm -hmm. this disk operating system, became a whiz at IBM compatible computers mm. and a whiz um, washing my boss's car and making him tea. You know, usual stuff. And at 18... When they offered me a £50 deal to stay, I said, thank you very much, I will leave and I'll start my business called 21st Century Computers. And off I went. Interesting. The misconception about Kitty Care is that I married into Kitty Care. Okay. So Kitty Care was an independent, brilliant store selling baby goods. Mm. Fantastic. Classic corner shop. And that's doing it an injustice. It was a 5,000 square foot corner shop sure. in a Peterborough village. Um, run by my in-laws right. and my wife, uh, or my girlfriend at the time, yeah, sure. and or my childhood sweetheart, and um, it was a exceptionally well-driven business. Mm. That's 
the misconception. I was the public face of kiddiecare.com and absolutely did I believe it was mine. Absolutely did I, I believe and still believe I am the founder of kiddiecare.com. Yeah. But that wouldn't have happened without you. No, 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 so... no, no, that is your argument and it wouldn't have happened without them. Hmm. And yep, um, so you know you have to you have to acknowledge that, mm. and everybody puts their time in. And as you know, in in businesses, you have two founders or five founders, and we all think we are the founder. Yeah. You know, and I absolutely do believe I am the founder, and, and I am the creator and transformational expert of that business. Yeah. Because we took it from a corner shop to the biggest online business in the UK. Yes. And that's what historically I'm known for. Sure. Historically, I build tech and I built a product that happened to sell pushchairs. And there's your challenge. People in, in retail, they, they add a website to their store mm. or they add a website to their, as a channel to gain sales. Uh, I built technology that was the forefront of the industry mm. and became the seventh most powerful man in online retail and then the fifth and then the fourth, whatever it was, mm. for four years running in UK because I built a technology platform that happened to sell push chairs and baby yeah. goods uh, and we changed that business inside out so it was a, uh, a truly scalable fantastic business I loved every minute I can tell mm. there's a lot of warmth there and you did the one thing that a lot of entrepreneurs potentially struggle to do um, and you exited so ultimately by, by creating kiddiecare.com coming out the other side making good money mm. you could have stopped you could have actually stopped but it's very clear that there's yeah. a drive, there's, you know, that, that, that was just part of the journey for you. Well, other people do drugs and um, it bypassed me. And my drug is um, clearly, mm. as it turns out, being an entrepreneur. Yeah. And whatever that means to people. I have a restless soul um, and we can debate why. And I've never seen a shrink and, and I, would, I would be probably scary to open up. But the reality is I have something inside me which drives me to succeed. You know, I have a very, very successful father-in-law, and when we came together at Kitty Care, you know, we, we sparked in good and bad ways. But the good was outweighed the bad, in my opinion, sure. and we created something that was phenomenal. Um, but I'm always competing against somebody. You know, uh, and when people say I'm very successful, and we sold Kitty Care for 70 million in cash, and I did two years as an earnout. It wasn't an earnout actually, and this is a misconception again. I actually didn't need to do two years. I got cash that deal. There was no earnout. There was no, hey Scott, will you stay? I decided to stay because they asked me to stay to effectively run their online program. Okay. And it was uh, 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 it was something that was required from me. And there's a big debate in the family, Scott. Why did you stay for two years? Because I said I would. Principle. Principle. And when I say I was going to do something and I believed it was part of a 70 million deal, I will. Because what I'm going to do, family, is guarantee the deal. You guys go off into the sunset and unfortunately I've got to stay. But that challenge <laughs> of saying, of Morrison's, of Morrison's took my tech and wanted me to be CEO of Morrison's.com and chief architect of 17 billion pound business was, this is intriguing. Now it turns out an entrepreneur doesn't fit into corporate enterprises and they don't want entrepreneurs in corporate enterprises and on the first day in the first week and the first month I discovered I was uh, a nobody in that business and um, that was a challenge for me but I still did my two years on one day because I felt it was the right Fair play to you. decision yeah. and I had, sh I had shaken the hands of the CEO and CFO and that was the right thing for me to do. Yeah and all that experience that you've got from that and, and other businesses, you share, you're giving back to other entrepreneurs, mentoring, supporting them and investing. Where did that, where did that mindset come from? The Princess Trust when I was 18. I ran out of money when I was 18. Okay. And I couldn't turn to my, um, my family. Um, absolutely not. I felt I couldn't turn to my in-laws who were multi-millionaires. Um, that was a sign of weakness and a sign, a sign of failure. And um, I turned to Midland Bank, and as a spotty 18-year-old, it was hard enough to get in bank accounts, <laughs> let alone an overdraft. Sure. But in my first year at 21st, I did 56,000 in turnover and made 12,000 pounds. The average sale uh, was a printer for 256 pounds, star printers in those days. So you can imagine 56 grand in the first year. Yeah. So turning to Midland Bank was fun, 
hysterical looking back, mm. but it was hugely frustrating at the time because the answer was no. Yeah. Absolutely. But what they did do to their credit, and I don't give banks much credit. I'm not a big fan of investment banks, even though I have one, and I'm not a fan of banks at all. Um, they should be here to serve us, the entrepreneurs who create wealth, not to um, do what they do. Uh, and that's a fact, and I can go on uh, all day there, and uh, mm, I'd love to drive some change in that uh, category. But the reality was um, I found myself in front of the Prentice Trust Committee in yep. Cambridge, uh, and, I ha I, and being the entrepreneur or salesman I am, I sold my way into 5,000 loan, interest-free, and thereafter a journey developed with the trust, um, uh, which has lasted 30 years. And now I've come full circle. I'm now a patron of the trust. Yes. So I've signed off um, six-figure checks to the trust, and I love mentoring um, those folks. That has branched out into Hatch Ventures, which we've now renamed Hatch, which is kind of cool. And Hatch has 70 businesses that we support. We are the first check in. So we call that pre-seed. Yep. They go on to raise seed, hopefully. They go on to raise maybe a convertible note and um, Series A and Series B as, mm. they, as, they, as they, they scale. But I, um, I'm that risk taker mm. and uh, I'm a big supporter in the UK. So I have 70 businesses, 66 in the UK, four in the States. And the 66 in the UK nearly have 2,000 employees. We are the first check. And then we kind of surround them with a go-to-market help and strategy. Mm. And then we have a couple of hundred funds who come in if they're, if they're good enough and they support them. So we develop a business and um, I'm a big fan of the UK. I'm a big fan of the UK um, and I love uh, mentoring and supporting the younger folks in the UK. And I can exactly. go on uh, and really uh, and talk about it a lot. Yeah, um, I think you've got a proper twinkle in your eye. Yeah, you I think there's, there's a real problem. You know, um, the tech is an industry or an, uh, is a revolution. Has mm. been for 20, 30 years. Mm. We've been talking about it forever. And it's been e-com, and it's been this, and it's been AI, and it is now something else, or maybe AI. But the reality is, I do believe it's the youngsters, yeah. the 20-year-olds and the 30-year-olds and the 40-year-olds, and maybe the 50s if I count myself, who are driving change. Yeah. What we have in the country is parish councils who are 70 and 80 years old on average, protecting their cobble streets, which I love. I live in a... 17th century barn conversion. I have that beautiful village. Sure. I have that beautiful house. But the realities are we've got a house of lords of an age. Mm. We have a government and, and house of commons of an age. Really, do we stand them all down and let the youngsters take control of the asylum? Because we need to push harder and drive and lead. I'm not sure we're leading much. One of the things I can imagine could be um, a frustration for you is you're, you're, you're so capable, you've been so capable, you've got so much knowledge. And then when you partner uh, and invest and support these entrepreneurs, there must be stories you've got where you, know, you can't be the eyes and ears all the way through the journey. Someone that might start out on a certain way gets distracted by certain things. Have you, we've all heard of the kiddie care, mm. big money. Thank you. So, but is there... Are there stories where ultimately it hasn't gone as well as it should? There's been failures well, and, there's and been, it's frustrating for you. No, I've, I've, I've had, I, I can name 10 instances. I'll probably give you one. And um, I, uh, when, when Morrison's imploded a couple mm. of years after I left, I left Kitty Care, in, 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 uh, sold it in 11 and, 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 they, and I left in 13. They probably imploded you know, in, in, in 14. So I grabbed my whole team. 20 engineers, maybe slightly less, brought them into my office and, and along with a couple of other folks and said, well, what are we going to do now? And um, um, I came up with an idea and said, right, guys, you run it. So I funded it and got VC funded. Yeah. The first time ever I got external VC funding, okay. which is ironic because Kitika had family money. We remortgaged. We, we were salary sacrifice. We jumped into that business, bankrupt or success. Yeah. That's the option. And yeah. that sums me up. Bankrupt or success. Okay. So over here, um, I created a business called Elevate. And I worked out very quickly at Morrison's, which turned out to be the whole grocery market, mm. that um, um, Wrigley's were paying for product position in the check at the checkout. Yeah. Nearly 100 million a year. So you don't buy chewing gum. You pick chewing gum up. 
yeah. at the checkout. It's an afterthought almost. Right, so guess yeah. what? If Wrigley's aren't by the checkout, there's no business. So I took that online. Now today, about 30% of Amazon's revenues yeah. are actually paid sponsorship of product placement. That's the tech. I developed that tech for, ironically, Morrison's, um, uh, Not the High Street, Iceland, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. And I stood by and let the team run it. But unfortunately, the CEO um, and, a, and a few others decided that they couldn't take the salary sacrifice yeah. and, and they needed to leave and left because they needed to get back into corporate enterprise. They needed to earn X. They needed to go on holiday and keep their, their wives happy. And that's fine. But I'm a dog at war. So I jumped into that business, you know, and I trimmed it down to, you know, from X 40 people to 20 people to 15 people, cut cancer who challenged me and got that business doing 30,000 pounds a month. Doesn't sound a lot, does it? I sold it for $26 million. And people say to me, it's only 30,000 pounds a month. And I say, well, just step back. We're building middleware and technology. Mm -hmm. So there's always going to be somebody, a Microsoft, an Apple, a Quotient in this case, who were New York listed, who need that technology. Because guess what? They don't develop technology. They have a business yeah. and they need a function. They can either buy it or develop it. Yeah. And if they need it now, they can't spend two, three years trying to develop it. And here we are. So I packaged it up, made people aware. Now I did this at the same time I started Hatch. Okay. Because I got bored of Hatch. Yeah. And then, close, the and then Elevate said, hey, we're, we're in trouble, are you? I jumped in. I, had, I got a 276 times return on my investment in Elevate. That's unbelievable. Which is cool. And everybody says that's cool. I couldn't let them go bust. No. Um, the VCs refused to go back in because it wasn't hitting the metrics, which is a great learning for me in my VC business now. Of course. Um, and I wasn't going to accept it. And that's my drug. I wasn't going to accept it. So that's my experience. The next experience with Hatch is we invest in, in, in people. Mm. The team want to invest in data. I struggle because I'm an old school. I'd like to invest in you. Mm. You as an individual because you've come up with the hard knocks, you've learned failure, you've pivoted and, 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 and you're now uh, you know, trying to you know, move forward again. And I like that. That's where I am. Mm. Um, but... VCs in this country, and the States to a point, will invest in data. And I kind of cross-reference it with people. I say, hey, come, there's a, there's a person here. There's, a, there's, a, there's a, you know, a founder here or founders. You know, surely we can, you know. That's a real big debate in my current business. Yeah. And, and I'm right and I'm wrong. Mm. I've had failure by investing in people, clearly. And I've, we've had failure investing in, in data-driven businesses. But every single business that fails, there's no... There's no doubt. I, I look at it and say, I could, I could have done it. I find that really interesting because um, I've been in both sort of camps. I've been the individual coming for investment. And you can see, you, you, you learn how important the relationship side of thing is. And you can see that the questions they're asking you from an investment point of view. And then I've been on the other side of it as well. In fact, we're in the Jack, um, J-A-Q, just ask a question, social media, mental health platform, yeah, the studio. Yeah. Um, what are your thoughts on Jack, firstly? Well, I think it's incredible. Um, you, have to, you have to understand that people need access to professionals. People mm. need access to support and people need access to help. You know, and I wonder, with the Prince of Stress, I had a couple of mentors, mentors, sorry. And um, one of them was the Queen's banker, John Wilson, and he worked for Barclays. And to be able to pick the phone up and ask for support and help. But today, where do you go? Sure. Where do you go for mentorship? Where do you go for private doctors? Where do you go for doctors of any kind because you can't get in? Where do you go? Mm. So having a platform that you can access is 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 phenomenal. Yeah. You know, wish you all the luck. And from a tech point of view, um, of course, it's you know it's an interface that sort of mirrors a Netflix, if you like. But the reason why I brought it up in, it is in context of Danny Gray, who founded it, an individual that sparks the trailblazing kind of mission-led sort of things. And I imagine that's a big part for you alongside whatever the product or the service might be that you would invest alongside. Are you able to almost, out of 100%, determine what percentage is most important in the person and then ultimately the service or product, or is it different every time? Well, I think, I think as a term we're using now in tech, 
in early tech, that tech's becoming a commodity. In my day, uh, which is the 1990s, mm. we were developing tech, putting pieces of tech together, yeah. which they call restless technology now, but re or headless, sorry. But the reality is um, we were building technology. Now it's a commodity. You go to Google and say, I need a PIM, a CRM, uh, a, a, a solution. They have it in the cloud already. Sure. So everybody has it in the cloud, and all we're doing is, is, is piecing it together. So the guys who come for investment, and, my, my, and I only invest in SaaS B2B, have developed something. Okay, but it's about the go-to-market application. Very rarely is it the tech. Yeah. And that is worrying for me to say, yeah. not really, because we can get the tech working. It's the application of how they go to market and find customers, yeah. keep customers, get find paying customers, mm. and then you can develop the tech. You can keep developing the tech. But I look over the last 10 years and think, hmm, maybe I should have span out a business similar to Kitty Care. You know, I look at um, Screwfix, and when they sell that, they spin out Trade Store, you know, and, oh, and they come back in the vertical, and I think, oh, maybe I should have done that. But, you know, time will tell. I might, you know, I, 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 I challenge myself constantly about the right decisions. Yeah. Did I do this right? Did I do that wrong? Um, but I sat next to a guy, a couple of guys at the Princess Trust venue last night, and they were richer than I am, uh, more successful than I am, and it was great to see them at the Trust. And they were on it and in it and aggressive. And I think, oh, maybe I should have done more and should do more because, you know, you talk about my spark. Um, uh, that's my guilt trip. That's my restlessness. I'm still the 18-year-old with 30 quid in his pocket. And I have the cars, I have the houses, I have the boats. But the real and I have the, the wife uh, and my partner in business. And I have the beautiful children and the beautiful grandchildren. So you really should think I should be pretty content. Um, but the guy next to me last night at Princess Trust reminded me that at 16, he was 60 plus, he was absolutely enjoying himself, really aggressively enjoying himself, making money, being taxed, providing for the, the UK, ultimately. And I, um, and that's what it's about, isn't it? Mm. Retired to do what? Yeah. Retired to do what? Um, you know, I think I have retired. Last 10 years, I've, yes, my value of, my valuation of my portfolio is 890 million. And I'm the seed check. So I put 300 grand in, and they're usually at that point they're worth a million, two million, whatever they were. And that goes, that's gone to X, and we employ two, two and a half thousand people, I understand, great. But really, they're there, it's their business. I'm the, I'm the underlying key investor, maybe, but I'm the underlying investor. So, I, and I think I've been smart, or silly, smart because I have 70, and they're taking the hit, they're taking, they're digging in the trench, you run your own business, you understand mm. how hard it is, and I'm mentoring and I'm helping, or I'm rushed in to help sure. the deep problems. Um, but I'm not running aggressively my own enterprise anymore, yeah. um, even though Hatch is 10 years old and, you know, uh, and I suppose Hatch is mine. Um, but, you know, so I still weigh up the pros and cons tell. of maybe there's another one in me. You yet. can't do everything, though. Maybe there's You're another one a lot. in me. Yet. We'll see. We'll see. No, I, I, I've learned so much from talking to you and just thank you for being so open and sharing so much. I, I, you know, what you do next is going to be interesting as well because you certainly haven't retired and you know, can't see that happening anytime soon. So thank well, you, Scott. Thank you for your time. Awesome. Great to see you. Cheers. Cheers.